are obsessed with the Connie Fife Show. It's about a lifestyle shift to move up or out. Hey, you want your jam? What's the one thing that really drives you? What makes you unstoppable? It's about opening a new door to live your dream. People give up way too early on their dreams. It's about enjoying the journey. It's about keeping it real. Damn, now the interviewee is interviewing the interviewer. I like this. It's all about you. I knew there was something else I wanted to do. Stop taking shit so seriously. Y'all can do this. Take an outrageous look at life and laugh. This is the Connie Fife Show. We love your voice. We love your jam. You need to be on radio. And now your host, Connie Fife. Hey everyone, it's Connie Fife, and welcome back to another episode of the Connie Fife Show. And as you know, every week we bring you the outrageous, the crazies, the the what am I doing here, um, folks on the Connie Fife Show. And this week we have one of them. He's one of those crazy ones. He has been uh, living the lifestyle uh, entrepreneur gig for, um, I think when I looked, it was, uh, last I looked, it was uh, 19 years, 21 years? 30 years. Um, 30 years? It just keeps on, it just keeps on growing. Um, so he did that shift. He moved up. He moved out and he activated his brand. So he is here with us and he is going to be talking about financial intelligence if there is some intelligence to that. So welcome to the Connie Five Show, Henry Dawes. Thank you, Connie. I'm, I'm really happy to be here. So how are you doing hanging out there? How are you surviving COVID? We are surviving. We've been hunkered down. I guess this is week nine or 10. We got back from our spring break on the 14th, pretty much uh, 14th of March, that is. Mm. And so we've been here for the duration. It's good. My three boys are here. My wife is here. Everybody's healthy. That's the most important thing. That's the most important thing. I mean, there's been some you know, kinks in the road. Uh, sure, my son was uh, getting married, and that is not happening. So that's put off until 2021. The venue, um, they're giving them all 2020 pricing. Okay. <laughs> we'll go with it. All right. Um, you, yeah, know, you know, sad for them, you know, that, but... You know, I'll give them another year to get to know each other. But, <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Right? Yeah, there's always, always a shiny. They've, got, they've actually got the rest of their life to get to know each other. Yeah. As someone who's been married for 30 years can attest. Right. To the same woman, I might add. So. Well, that's good. That is absolutely good. To, good to know. But um, yeah, I know, and a lot of people are handling it differently. And, you know, there's, you always hear these stories about people on their Costco trips. My last Costco trip actually was somebody, I was standing in my space, and there was a, a gentleman in front of me, and, and, and he was clothed, I mean, com- completely, and he still told me I was too close to him. So, you know, <laughs> and it was like, oh. Well, that could, that could have happened before the virus, too, you know? <laughs> This is true. This is this is true. And I'm just like, okay, and I'm inching back and I'm looking at the guy behind me. There's some gals behind me. And, uh, and my, my husband, you know, he, he finally catches up to me and he looks at me and he's like, he's like, honey, you can get closer to the guy in front of you. And I went, no. Mm-hmm. <laughs> nope. Uh-uh. And everybody just burst into laughter behind That's me. <laughs> it was All right. It was pretty comical. So we're going to be talking about financial intelligence. So, um, okay, so so help me out here. What is financial intelligence? Oh, uh, wow. What is financial <laughs> intelligence? Well, you know, people talk about financial literacy. Right. right? So literacy technically is, you know, your ability to uh, read and write in a, some sort of a language, mm-hmm. uh, which is great, but it's kind of what you do with that reading and writing that really matters. So intelligence would be sort of the next level. Great. We're literate now. So how do we take uh, that literacy and apply it in our, in our day-to-day life? So that's really what I was you know, going for with the whole moniker of FQ, you know, IQ is intelligence and EQ is emotional intelligence. So FQ is financial intelligence. Mm, interesting. That's a really good spin on it and, and how you look at things. So you work with folks in business, 
you're a finance coach, you're an author, you're a, a serial entrepreneur. I always look at that serial entrepreneur. What does that mean? Serial entrepreneur, that means you've tried and failed and tried and failed and tried and failed <laughs> and tried and failed and you just keep trying and failing. I mean, that's that's a, that's a serial entrepreneur. I'm actually also a business coach. So I, mm -hmm. I, pr I primarily coach people in entrepreneurship. And then I wrote this book and I published it last fall. And now I've been coaching people as well in a second discipline, which is um, the personal finance side. On the entrepreneurial side, obviously that flows into personal finance, so the lines can can sometimes be a little blurry. I find myself very often talking to, to my business coaching clients about you know their their personal money situation. But from the FQ um, coaching side of it, it doesn't preclude that you're an entrepreneur. I work with just you know regular people who work W two jobs who want to maximize uh, you know their their financial fortunes. Okay. Okay. So you, you talk about that your approach is half art, half science, but 100% rooted in your client's best interest. Correct. So how does that come out, especially when you're a coach approach strategic advisor, a CASA? A <laughs> CASA. CASA <laughs> is something that I created because I went through formal coaching training uh, and I realized after a year of doing the formal coaching training that I was leaving a lot of my entrepreneurial experience on the table if I wanted to follow the strict rules uh, of, as a coach. Uh, again, I think um, I, I, most of what I've done in my life has always been kind of a, as a hybrid. Uh, I can never sort of just stay in a particular lane. I kind of have to create my own super highway. So that, that sort of Sort of been been my approach. Well, most most entrepreneurial entrepreneurs do. Yes, successful ones, even unsuccessful ones, I guess. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I, I uh, and I've had I've had a little bit of both. I know I make fun of it. I've had some great successes, and I've had some mm -hmm. ignominious failures. I wrote about them in in um, in sharp detail uh, in my book. Even though it was a money book, I did talk about entrepreneurship. Throughout, I still believe that the the um, briskest road to uh, financial independence or wealth mm -hmm. or riches or whatever it is, is through entrepreneurship. Right. But there's a million ways to skin the cat. My parents, they they um, my mother was a school teacher. My dad was a chemical engineer, a middle manager. And yet um, uh, we were not rich, but we never wanted for money. Okay. College was paid for. We had a roof over our head. We had a new car, you know, every 10 years or so, or maybe. Right. And, and they were fine. And they invested in the stock markets and they made good decisions. Uh, they were pretty frugal, uh, pretty good, pretty good road model. If you've ever read the millionaire next door, that yeah. was kind of their, that was kind of their life. And okay. It's it's boring. It's unexciting. It's not um, people are not jumping up and down yet um, when they're. So you, so you, had take, so you had to take a different approach to that. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. No, money shouldn't be exciting. Uh, I, I tell people it should be really boring. If it isn't boring, you're doing something wrong. Well, you you work with those that want you help them to become and help them in unbecoming the person that they are now. Uh, which is um, the yes. one that's struggling. So how do you help exactly. them become the unbecoming, the person that they are now? Well, what you have to do is is really strip away their their preconceived notions, their, dare I say, cognitive distortions, voices that might be in their head. Now, I'm not trained as, as a psychologist. I tell people, look, I know enough to be dangerous, but I'm not a shrink. If you need a shrink... Go hire a shrink. Um, but the psychology of money, I believe, is the place that you have to start. You have to understand what are your patterns and what are your tendencies when it comes to money. And then you have to deconstruct that, sort of pluck out what's working and do your best to kind of wall off or throw away what isn't. So that's where we start. That's the essence of unbecoming. I often tell people... I hired a golf coach a couple of years ago and the golf mm. courses are open here in New Jersey, uh, finally. And after 35 years of playing golf with my own homemade swing, I said, Doc, you, you, you got to fix me, right? 
<laughs> and he fixed me. And what he taught me was actually very easy to learn. The hard part was unlearning 35 years. What you already time. did. Right. <laughs> right. right. What I've been doing. Uh, you know, it's truly muscle memory. And it's and the same rules really apply when it comes to money. You've been doing things a particular way. And for a lot of people, it ain't working. Right. It's you got to change your approach. Right. You weighted down by the history of what it is that you've done. So we have to uncover that. So are you uncovering again? So well, you talked about the habits. So you're uncovering their bad habits, and that's some of it. That's and some good it. habits, and right. then taking some of the right and some of those good habits, and creating some of those steps forward. Um, what are, What are some of those? Some of, well, I, I guess let me go. Let me just jump forward because I, I I was looking at some of your your stuff, and you talk about the five reasons businesses fail. Are there some reasons? Sure. That people fall into that black hole of not being able to manage their their money and not being financial literate. Well, I'm actually writing um, some some uh, blog posts um, a couple, few weeks ago. Uh, a few people asked me, you know, what are what are some of the things I should look out for? I want to become an investor, right? When the market cratered back in in February and and March. A lot of people just cashed out and went on their way and said, I've had enough with the right. casino. Right. Mm -hmm. But other folks came back and said, hey, you know what? There may be a real opportunity here to get in. Right. Mm -hmm. A lot of you know, everything has been thrown out. Babies at bathwater, the whole house has gone out. But not all these companies are going to suffer. Some of them are actually going to do quite well. So maybe right. there's an opportunity for me to invest. So I said to one of them, I said, you know, you just gave me a great idea. I'm going to write a bunch of posts about the um, rookie mistakes that investors make. Okay. And I'm up to part four now. I'm writing, I'm writing part four. I was actually working on it this morning. So the number one tenant in my book that I guess if I could create a log line for it, it's I paraphrase Vince Lombardi, the, the famous, you know. Okay. Green Bay Packers coach. I say, right. risk isn't everything. It's the only thing. Mm. People focus on return, 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 return. Oh, I beat the S&P 500. Oh, I did this. And I did all this wonderful stuff. Right. And they conveniently forget the risks that are associated with it. So when we're talking about financial intelligence, we need people to understand that we're not just chasing our return. We have to measure that against the inherent risk. Okay. Right. 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 So think about it as an entrepreneur. People say, oh, I can't be an entrepreneur. That's really risky. Well, you know what? 35 million people are now unemployed within the last month who were That's working right. for another company. Now, for me, as a 30-year as a entrepreneur, I look at that and I say, now, that's risky. Because yes. you let somebody else decide your fate. That's right. That's right. And those of us that are entrepreneurs are saying, I see opportunity. I see opportunity. So yes. I've been writing a bunch of stuff saying, okay, what are the rookie mistakes that people make? Right. Well, they, they take on too much risk. They, they don't know how to diversify. They listen to people on the television who are out there doing, you know, the old fashioned pump and dump. Oh, buy this, buy that, buy this, right. buy that. They're not doing their homework. They're not doing all of the grunt work and the boring stuff. It's really tough to sell boring stuff to people. You know, oh, and the, people oh, and the marketing and the ads right now, it's, uh, it's, it's insanity. <laughs> it's like, are we gonna, no, it is. It, it's, it's, it's it, you're being bombarded. Right. It, it is. It is. And then yesterday, um, there, there was one, and we're, we're just not television people in at nighttime. And sometimes it's like noise in the background and um my husband had had one on and and um of course there's no games or anything now on the watch nope <laughs> and, uh, so, <laughs> no games so, so you don't have that on but it, it was actually a commercial about oh you're getting back on the road now so it's time to buy you a new car so i was like are you freaking kidding me <laughs> and i saw the same thing and and you know what my wife and i we dvr everything because that's just kind of how we are okay <laughs> and we're zapping through the commercials and i stopped and i rewound because i saw something that piqued my interest she says what are you doing she said i gotta i have to go back to this ad it was an automobile ad okay and i wrote about this in my blog and i said they were advertising 
84 month, 0% financing with the first three months deferred. And then I went two ads forward and Hyundai was one upping that 84 months, 0% financing, four months deferred. Right. And I'm thinking to myself, most people will never own a car for seven years, not even close to it. I do. I drive my cars till the fenders fall off. I do too. I think that's a smart money I move. I do too. But you know what I said? The car's going to die before they pay. <laughs> <laughs> before you paid for it? Yeah. How many times has that happened that the car ends up on the scrappy and you still owe thousands of dollars on it? Yeah, that's, that's, that's what I said. That's what's going to happen because that's, that's, that's me. I, the cars, the cars just go and go and go. Okay. I guess I actually had a car. It was a Volkswagen. I mean, I drove it. And it was a cabriolet. I mean, I loved, mm-hmm. I loved my car. I had one of those way and back I, in the day. And yeah. I went in to get it, get, get it, you know, the maintenance on it. And they come back out and they're like, oh, honey, you can't have your car anymore. I'm like, what do you mean you can't have my car? <laughs> they're like, <laughs> they're like There's the steering. It's rusting inside the, the steering column. I'm like, well, fix it. They're like, no, it's mm-hmm. something that we can't fix. Like your, your car, literally, you cannot have your car anymore. <laughs> like, I was like... Oh. No, I mean, That's I don't sad. know how many thousands of miles are, are on that car. So, like, you know, because I had to buy a new car. So, yeah, I drive my cars until, like, there's, like, nothing to them. <laughs> so there's just a pile of rust and ball. I just sold my one of my I have two Chevy trucks. I sold one of them in January, had 130,000 miles on it to 2008. And I said, you know what? I just had this feeling that I'm due for a major repair. Nice. So let's just get a couple bucks for it. I got like $5,700 for it. I was more than happy. One less car in my life. It was great. But that that truck will probably last another 20 years. That engine will go for half a million miles. Yeah. And we just pass them down through the family and through the family. Yeah. You know, right. through the kids and go on and just keeps on going. But yeah, that Volkswagen had to go. That Connie Five Show is heard everywhere. You can find the Connie Fife Show on most of your favorite networks. It's time to now recognize and thank our major networks for all of their support. In the house, we have Conscious Business Radio, C-Suite Radio, Transformation Radio, iHeart Radio. We are also heard on Google Play, Apple Radio, Stitcher, and so many more that I just can't keep up with them all. I'm Connie Fife, your unstoppable diva. We'll learn more about our gym and how we can work together at my fancy swanky website, ConnieFifeShow.com. I'll see you over there. Until then, like, 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 share, share, share. Now back to the show. All right. So, um, love talking to you. We can just keep on going here. So, let me make sure I cover some of these uh, questions sure. that we have here. Mm-hmm. So, and you talk about, too, that when when you're coaching, that when you click with someone that it's like magic. It is. And you it's get like shit magic. and you get shit done. We get shit done. Yeah. So you so there is no preconceived notion. I mean, you go in there with a clean slate when you are coaching, when you are working with someone. So I mean, what what is it? What is that sweet spot that someone is going to come to you and trust their business with you to for you to help them? It's even bigger than that, trust themselves. You know, because we're going to talk mm-hmm. about some stuff. We're going to get pretty, pretty deep in the mud. Uh, again, trying to figure out patterns. For me, um, I only really have one requirement when somebody mm-hmm. comes to me. You got to be coachable. I've had people who are not coachable. Mm-hmm. They, they went in with the best of intentions, but after Raising a few months, <laughs> it was pretty obvious that, you know what, we're just not simpatico. And yeah. we part friends. It's fine. Yeah. Um, that happens. That's, you know, that's okay. Uh, I've opened my business practice up actually for the months of April, May, and June for free to anybody. So mm. I've had, uh, probably by now, what we're about halfway through it, mid May, probably had about 50 different people sign up for calls. And I've talked to a lot of them. There's a lot of universality to, to being an entrepreneur. Uh, you're working without a net, uh, yeah. you don't have anybody who you can really confide in where you don't believe that they have an agenda, right? Mm -hmm. We call this in the coaching business. I'm making air quotes while I do this. um, Judgment-free awareness, we call this. My agenda is for you to be successful. If you're successful, uh, you'll stay with me. You'll tell your friends. They'll tell two friends. It'll be viral, right? 
um, that is it. I don't have, I've had people who've asked me to invest uh, in their businesses. I'm like, dude, I don't do that. Right. More than once. That will change our relationship. If I wanted to be an investor, I would be an investor. Right. It's mm -hmm. the same thing on the money side. On the money side, my wife said to me, she said, why don't you manage other people's money? Now, I do manage other people's money in my family, and that's it. Okay. And, and you know why? Because when we have a waterfall decline in, in, in February, in March, I do not want to talk people off the ledge right. when that happens, mm -hmm. because that is going to happen. This is the fourth time it's happened in my adult life. Uh, seems to happen every 10 years, plus or minus. Mm, yeah, about we that. have a big, big swoon, you know, 87, 2000, mm -hmm. 2008, now 2020. Yeah. Right? So within one standard deviation of 10 years, we have a big decline. Right. Uh, I don't want to do that. I don't want to have to tell you that uh, everything is going to be okay because everything is going to be okay. Mm -hmm. Before it's okay. It might be shit yeah, for yeah. a while. We got right? it, got it. <laughs> so, so why is hope not a plan? Hope is not a hope is not a plan. I haven't printed a t-shirt. I'm actually not wearing that t-shirt today. Hope is not a plan, right? People, so people use the H word all the time. Well, I hope our sales pick up next quarter. It's like uh, there's a rather you know profane saying about hoping in one hand and doing something else in another, and so right. which one fills up first. <laughs> uh, I don't want to hear about hope. Why don't we plan to increase sales or revenues right. for the next quarter? You want to leave it to the fates of the gods, right? Well, you know what? The gods will will look after me. They always have. It's like, uh, yeah. Let's let's try to let's try to build a program that that kind of guarantees that next quarter will be mm -hmm. successful. Right. Right. There's nothing wrong with hope. Having faith in other things. Look, uh, that's been around for hundreds, thousands of years. People have faith in something greater than themselves. I'm not going to knock that. But when it comes to business or if it comes to money, uh, you know, you're on your own. <laughs> you got to do this. Need to have a plan. You so what, have a plan. how are you helping people with the plan right now during COVID? Well, that's a that's a, a lot about of the you know these fifty conversations that I've had with people, yeah. and I've had multiple conversations uh, with with a, a bunch of them. I probably picked up a half a dozen pro bono clients. Uh, I don't know that they'll ever convert because um, a lot of people are broke. A lot of people's you know people in uh, travel business, hospitality business, right. they went from a hundred to zero over literally overnight. Overnight. Um, part of it is. Um, sharing wisdom with younger generations millennial and such who haven't seen these four declines that 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 you and i have seen right um and just reminding them that you know this too shall pass it's going to be ugly but it will pass right. we know that because we've survived civil wars and world wars and disco we've survived a lot of different things over disco <laughs> my personal favorite as a child of the 70s. Go. Wait so a minute. we have survived <laughs> some really awful things, I got to tell you. Uh, and But if you're, if you're 25 years old, you don't have the perspective of that. You don't right, remember you don't. 2008. You were in right. grammar school. You're not, that's not going to have, have a visceral reaction right. for you. You don't know. So coming to the gray hair type to, who can say, look, it, it'll pass. It will. In the meantime, we need to get our house in order. You know, right. Number one question for people is, are you, do you have resources personally? Can you keep food on the table? Right. Can you keep gas in your car, even though you don't drive anywhere? Uh, can you keep the lights on? Because the landlord and the electric company, they will have, you know, they'll have a little sympathy for a while, but then that's going to go out the window. But they're still going to be knocking at your door. That's one thing that we did here, too. We, you know, we, we, you know, we have several... Uh, you know, I, I don't like calling us serial entrepreneurs. I guess we fall in that category too. But we have several businesses and we looked at, at them and said, you know what? Um, you know, we even have an Airbnb, you know, that crashed, yeah. that, that crashed as well. Sure. And we just said, you know what? Let's just tell everybody you have an, uh, until after June and we're just freezing everything. And that's what we did. We yeah. actually literally had business owners crying. 
you know, saying, oh, yeah. we can't believe you did that. Like, you don't know what that does for us. Like our heart is just melting right now that you did that. But we knew that we could put gas in the car. Well, we're not going anywhere. Um, you know, and where we're living right now, it's like downtown USA and mm-hmm. all sure. USA. So we can walk everywhere we go. And um, actually, I drove this past weekend and I, you know, I went to buy flowers for the yard and I said, I don't know if I know how to drive. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't know how to do this. <laughs> and I Come on, it's just like riding a bicycle. Right, right. That's what I've been told. And, and it was full of gas. <laughs> <laughs> and it was full of gas. I finally went to the gas station this weekend for the first time in two months. I know, I know. Like, it was right and funny. And it was but, and it was a dollar seventy nine. Yes. <laughs> but to be able to do that for people, um, I mean it, it warmed my heart. That's really I, you know. nice, yeah. You know, to be able to, but come June, we're going to be saying, okay, wait a minute, <laughs> you know, we're, okay. you know. <laughs> yeah. but so hopefully we'll be able, hopefully not be able to, but hopefully we will be out of this soon and everybody will be, you know, getting back. Well, again, we're back, we're back to the H word. Hopefully they'll come up yeah. with a, with a, I know. With, with a vaccine. Hopefully Let's have a plan. Proceed with the warm weather, right? I mean, we've heard these. I know stories, and yet we look at the evidence. Right, right? we look at the numbers: eighty thousand, a million infected. Uh, we look at all of these things. We look at the fact that the fastest of a vaccine has ever been created in mankind was four years with the mumps. Usually, it's ten years. Right. right? So I applaud that our government is. What they called it, I think, Operation Warp Speed. I mean, come on, you're, you're, you're stealing yeah. a, 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 a Star Trek reference. I guess it's universal, but our, right. you know what? whatever works. If you can get a vaccine, it would be unbelievable. Yes. Right? But in the meantime, that's the hope. I got a plan for the fact that we're not going to have. The whole what is the plan? Right. And how am I going to live my life and my family's life? You know, my youngest is at college out in Utah. So we had to come back early, do remote learning. He hasn't secured housing for the fall yet. I said, well, we don't even know from the university. We don't know. Are you going to be online? Do we just get him a place anyway? Sign up. Do I really want to sign a lease and take take on that risk if he's going to be remote? Right. Here? We're left twisting in the breeze. We right. have to still make a plan. Doesn't mean that it's etched in, in granite. We may have to call a few audibles. Right. Suspect. Mm-hmm. Uh, but at least we have a framework whereby we can, you know, follow some some rules. Mm, right. You okay. have it's old school. And, and, and right, and that's what it is. Something that that is in place, right? You, you want to you want to plan. We don't want to work by hope, but we're everybody's there for each other. Everybody's, and again, even today, not expecting it. And both our neighbors have contractors working on the outside of their houses. I was like, really? I was like. <laughs> I got a podcast today. Really? <laughs> well, my my wife and I were were looking at a apartment in Las Vegas to to buy in in March. That was the last you know time we were out in the wild when we came back yeah. on the fourteenth. And we're we're sort of negotiating with the owners about buying this apartment, which requires a gut renovation. Okay, twice before, and I kind of looked at her and I said. Uh, are we crazy to to consider moving 2,500 miles out west and renovating a, an apartment in a high rise building in the middle of a pandemic? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Let's do it. Let's yeah. hope that it all works. Let's out. throw a little caution to the wind. <laughs> Oh my gosh, Henry! Well, I'm really enjoying our our conversation, but uh, you know we have to wrap this up here. Sure. So, the, so the last thing I wanted to um, ask you is, um, what do you want the world to hear from you? I guess in the simplest terms, that I'm here to help. Right? I'm a coach. It's what I do. I coach in entrepreneurship. I coach money. Maybe I'll become a golf coach one of these days because I'm a pretty good golfer. Um, I've coached 40 teams in, in five different sports with my three boys. It's, it's, um, it's what I believe I was put on earth to do. Okay. Really just as simple as that. And, you know, I want to be a thought leader in a, in a bunch of different spaces, but you know, the internet is seven and a half billion people screaming, look at me, look at me, look at me, all at the same time. 
and it's difficult to differentiate yourself, but you know, you got to try, you got to go out there. And uh, just in the past six weeks, doing these pro bono calls, I have met so many interesting people from all over the globe. Nice. I have an international clientele and people are telling me what's going on. What's, you know, what's the deal in Peru? What's the deal in Barcelona? You know, what's the deal in, in Koh Samoy, Thailand. I mean, I've been hearing all these different things. It's, it's amazing and it's fascinating and it's fun. Man, it is fun. I mean, as fun as it can be when you consider we're in the middle of a global health crisis. That is fun. And we're working right from our home, from our home space, yep. our home office, which is the new normal, as they say. Mm-hmm. It's the new normal. Uh, the new normal. So I know you give away your five reasons for business failures. Why don't you let folks where they can get a copy of it? So uh, if you want to see any of my stuff, you just go to www.daasknowledge.com, dasknowledge.com. I even have dassknowledge.com because people are forever misspelling my name. Uh, if you want to see all the stuff that I do, like my baseball card collection and my screenplays that I write, oh my go, gosh. <laughs> just, just go to www.henrydaas.com, uh, just my name, henrydas.com which is kind of like my vanity site that has all sorts of different <laughs> fun stuff or time wasting stuff that I do. Um, yeah, that's it. Uh, you have time wasting stuff. <laughs> I've got time wasting stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know where that time wasting stuff is coming in, but well, I want to thank you for being here. I really enjoyed our conversation. Thank you. It was a lot Always. of fun. Always welcome to come back here. Well, folks, that's all we have for today. Um, Connie Fife. And well, you know what? Keep coming back, uh, continuing to listen to the Connie Fife Show. And if you're one of those crazy ones and you want to see if uh, you can get on the show, uh, let us know. Just head on over to the com, And if you want to learn more about our Talent Concierge label, just head over to talentconcierge.co. And that's it for now. And make sure that challenge yourself this week. And remember, it's not about hope. It's about the plan. <laughs> and make sure for this week... Be kind to each other out there because we're all you have. Take care. Bye-bye. Hey, y'all, it's Connie Fife. Thank you for listening to the Connie Fife Show. Check back often. You don't want to miss any of the good stuff. If you like what you hear and would like to be a guest on the show, head over to the ConnieFiveShow.com to apply. While you're there, check out our amazing advertising opportunities that will put you right in front of your perfect client. I will see you over there. Do yourself a favor this week. Activate your power and be unstoppable together.